Welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I'm now answering a question number 11 from the June 2019 C12C12 International A level paper. This is like the old specification, um, which in this C12, you've got questions which are related to P1 and some related to P2. Now, this question here is related to P1. And um, this question, um, it's kind of like a question that I think is important, so I'm going to answer it and we will see how to deal with it. So it says, the straight line L has equation Y equals MX minus 2, where M is a constant. The curve C has equation Y equals 2X squared plus X plus 6. The line L does not cross nor touch the curve C, so they don't intersect at all. Show that M satisfies this inequality, m, q, m squared minus 2m minus 63 is less than 0. Okay, now when you have a curve, this will be a quadratic that looks something like this, and a straight line that don't intersect, okay, um, that means if I try to solve the equations, these two equations simultaneously, there will be no solution. So if I try to start solving y equals mx minus 2 simultaneously with y equals 2x squared plus x plus 6, what's going to happen is I won't get any solution. All right, so let's start solving this. How do we solve this? How do we solve this simultaneously? Well, what we do is we substitute instead of y, what y is equal to in the other equations. If I replace this y, if I take this y and I replace it with 2x squared plus x plus 6. Then I'll get 2x squared plus x plus 6 is equal to mx minus 2. Now, I'm going to end up with a quadratic equation here. If I bring everything on one side, then it'll say equal 0. That's how we try to prepare to solve quadratic equations. So I have the x terms will be plus, you have x minus mx. And you have plus 6 minus plus 2, which is 8. So you have plus 8 equals 0. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to write this as this is 2x squared. Now I'll take the x as common but I'll write it out um, on this side and I have 1 minus m. This is the coefficient of the x then. Right so this if I if I expand this I'll get x minus mx. And I've got my plus 8 equals 0. Now I know because there is no intersection okay therefore there's no solution. It doesn't intersect, nor does it touch. Okay, they completely don't touch each other, so there's no intersection, there's, therefore there's no solution to this equation. So this is a quadratic equation. When a quadratic equation has no solution, then the discriminant, the discriminant is less than zero. It's negative. The discriminant is, a, is given by b squared minus 4ac is less than zero. Now, why is... The discriminant less than zero when there's no solution well when you have a quadratic equation of the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c and you solve it using the quadratic formula you have minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a if this part of the equation if this part becomes negative there will be no solution why because you'll have minus b plus or minus, this will be undefined. The whole thing will be undefined. So if b squared minus 4ac is negative, there's no solution to that equation. Okay? There's no solution to the equation. This will be like for the equation, this equals zero. All right? There is no solution. Now if, however, b squared minus 4ac is equal to zero, that means this whole thing will disappear and you'll have x equals minus b plus or minus 0 over 2a, you'll have one answer, minus b over 2a. So if the, if b squared minus 4ac is equal to 0, then what we can say is that the the line and the uh, curve are, the line is a tangent to the curve, because it only touches one place. And if b squared minus 4ac, so in the case of b squared minus 4ac being um, less than 0, let me just draw another line. In the case of b squared minus 4ac being less than 0, then it's like this. It doesn't touch the curve anyway. It doesn't touch the curve. Okay. In the case of b squared minus 4ac being equal to 0, then it brushes the curve at one point only. 
And in the case of V squared minus 4AC being um, positive, then it's going to cut the curve in more than one place. Okay, because then you have minus B plus minus, there'll be an answer there over 2A. So you have minus B plus this over 2A, that's one answer. And minus B minus this over 2A, that's a separate answer. So two distinct solutions. Okay, so in this case, it says the, the line L does not cross nor touch. So it's not equal to zero, nor is it positive, but it's negative. The discriminant is negative when there's no solution, when there's no, it doesn't intersect nor touch. Okay, nor touch. I'll just put that here just to make that clear. So now, in this case, A is the coefficient of x squared, which is 2. B is the coefficient of x, which is 1 minus m. And C is the um, constant term, which is 8. So we know that this um, is true. So we're going to put 1 minus m. That's B squared. 1 minus m squared minus 4 times 2 times 8 is less than 0. So if we expand this, we're going to get this will give us 1 minus 2m plus m squared minus 64 is less than 0. So we're left with m squared minus 2m um, minus 63 is less than 0. And I think that's what we had to show. m squared minus 2m minus 63 is less than 0. Okay, good. All right, so that's part A of the question done. Okay, so part B says, hence find the range of possible values of m. So hence meaning using what we just shown. So again, this is a type of question where if you don't know how to do part A, what you need to answer part B is already there, shown for you. All right, so you can skip part A if you don't know how to do it, but don't throw away these four marks. If you know how to solve a quadratic inequality like this is, then don't throw away these four marks. You must try to answer it. Now, this is um, uh, some topics where, where some students do make mistakes in. Um, quadratic inequalities. They treat it kind of like an equation and they make a, a few mistakes, right? So you can't just factorize this and then, you know, say, okay, I, either one value is less than zero or the other one is less than zero. You can't do it. It's not like an equation. Okay, it's an inequality. You've got to think a bit more deeply about this one. And it's not really that difficult, to be honest, but it's something that uh, students do make some mistakes with. First of all, we're going to do is we're going to find the critical value. So first of all, we're going to find when it equals zero, and then we'll think about how to deal with the inequality. So you have m squared minus 2m minus 63 is equal to zero. Okay, these are the critical values we're finding. Okay, so we can, I have this thing factorizes quite easily because um, I know seven times nine is 63. So we can see that these two numbers have to have different signs. Okay, um, so one is positive, one is negative. So it must be seven times minus nine. Seven times minus nine. Make some space this. You're going to have an M and an M there. Okay, so it's M plus seven and M minus nine. M squared minus 9M plus 7M so minus 2M minus 63. So we have M equals negative 7 and M equals so uh, positive 9, right? So M plus 7 is 0, M is ne negative 7, M minus 9 is 0, M is possible, uh, M is equal to 9. So now those are the values when this is equal to 0. We want to find when it is less than 0. That's what we want to find. So what we can do to find when it's less than 0 we can make a little sketch of how this would look. Okay, so we're plotting, um, making a little, so not plotting, we're just sketching. Okay, um, this is your M, and you can say this is your Y if you want. Now, we're plotting, okay, um, this graph in terms of this quadratic. So we know that M is negative 7, and positive 9 and this is like a, a smiley face because the m is positive so it opens upwards so it's going to it's going to look something like this it's going to look something like this we don't have to do an accurate sketch something like this that's how it will look okay so we can see that this is less than 0 this is below this m axis m okay the values of um, um, you know this whole function is less than 0 okay the value of this is less than 0 when m is between minus 7 and 9. That's when it goes below this because this m axis, you could say. All right? So when m is in this region here, between 7 and 9, minus 7 and 9, sorry, that's when you're going to have 
uh, no solution. Okay, because this that's when when basically when this is inequality is, is true. So this inequality is true when m is between negative seven and positive nine. So that's the solution to this inequality. Simple as that. Okay, if it said m squared minus two m minus six three is greater than zero, then we want we want to find the values of m when this is above the, this m axis. So we want to we will say that x is less than seven or x is greater than nine. But as we want to find um, you know, the values where this is less than zero, that's where it drops below this m axis. That's when this, the value of this is less than zero. Okay, so I hope that was clear. You can't just write, you know, solve this by factorizing and then having m plus seven is less than zero and m minus nine is less than zero. No, you find when they're equal to zero, then you think about the curve and where it drops below them. This, for these values of m, this whole function is going to be negative. If I put any value of m in here, it's going to give me a negative answer. If I put any value of m, which is less than minus 7 or more than 9, I'm going to end up with positive values. Okay, so that's when that's negative. So that's the answer to part B of this question. I went into a bit more detail because of, um, you know, I do make these videos to help students who maybe, you know, didn't pay attention properly during the course or they didn't have a teacher to teach them properly or they're homeschooled or whatever, for whatever reason, um, you know, so... Please excuse me, those guys who uh, you know know all of the stuff already. But you know, I mean, a lot of students say, "Why do you explain so much, sir?" Uh, some students do me make these comments. Just get to the answer. Well, I say to you, then just get the masking and <laughs> look at the masking if you want to check your answers. My point here is not just to give you the answers, but to explain for those students who need help how uh, you know to do the questions. I mean, anyone can get the answers by looking at the mask scheme. Right, if that's what you want to do, all right? So um, that's why I do sometimes go into more detail, especially when I see certain mistakes or certain questions or comments being made. Um, I like to clarify certain points to help the students to understand. Okay, so anyway, um, other questions from this particular paper, C12, and can be found in the playlist over here. And that will include some questions which are now from P2 as well as P1. It'll be, it's a mixture. But um, I'm going to put this particular um, question also in the playlist under P1 um, for, I guess that will be solving inequalities, solving equations and inequalities, and also in the um, chapter of quadratics. I'll put it in two separate places because it's related to both of those. I guess part B is more to solve inequalities and part A, but I've got them together anyway, no problem. And you can um, click on the link here to uh, subscribe to my channel. And don't forget to look at the description of this video to go to the documents which will take you to other units of uh, A-level maths, also for IGCSE. Share those documents with your friends, those people who might benefit for it, from it. Uh, thank you very much and see you soon.